Hello guys, M97 here once again and welcome to another tutorial. So last night I finished watching this new show called Stranger Things and it was extremely enjoyable, so much so that it actually inspired me to recreate the intro for it. And I think you should definitely check it out too. Now the reason I'm making a tutorial about this is that even though it might seem like just a simple intro, it has a lot of elements that tie together and make it look so unique and interesting. Now I'm gonna give you a quick preview of the final result that I ended up with and also do a side-by-side -side comparison with the original one. So here you can see how my version looks and I must say it was really fun experimenting and playing around with different effects to achieve the look I wanted. And here you can see them side by side, which in my eyes seem really close. Okay, so now that we know what we're trying to create, let's waste no time and jump right in. See that? What the? <laughs> okay, so here we are now in After Effects, and before we start off, I just want to give you a quick look on how the finished project looks, just so that you have a basic idea on uh, how everything's gonna work, and it'll, it'll be easier for you to follow. So uh, you can see there's mainly three comps, and uh, the reason for that is uh, basically if you go down to the, the final text and text here. The text comp contains all the letters individually except for the rank here, which I'll go into detail later. But you can see all the letters here are, are animated individually and then pre-composed into a final text. Uh, the name doesn't really matter. And the reason I did that is uh, because then I would have a much easier time animating, and, uh, animating the whole uh, comp all together instead of just going back and forth uh, between all the letters. Also, one more reason is because uh, if you come back here, there's this uh, reference pic from the uh, original intro. If we zoom in, you can see the glow is not really like flat. Uh, you can see here at the G letter and at the R, S, at the corners here, the glow is kind of more intense and uh, that kind of gives it a, a more interesting look instead of a, just a flat out glow. So that's one more reason why I pre-comped uh, all the letters in, uh, into one uh, so that I can create a new layer which I put a fractal noise effect on and uh, basically just mess around with the settings a little bit and uh, added a tint. Now if we turn the tint off uh, what I did here if you go back down just hit F4 you can see that the layer the fractal noise layer is set as an alpha mat to the text so basically the texture is going to be applied on top of the uh, of the text and give it kind of like a, a dynamic look and not just a flat out color. That way, when we go to the final comp, turn this off, you can see, since I added glow here, you can see the glow is not really flat. There's uh, like more glow here, uh, less here, but I, I turned off the tint effect. So if we come back and uh, select the noise, now the reason I added a tint effect is that if we turn it off, there were some parts that were really dark. So for example, the end here. So if you go, go back to the Stranger Things, there's not really glow going on here at all. So a uh, quick way to fix that, just added some tint and uh, amount of tint around 70% uh, looked fine. So if we take a look at it now, it's a lot better. So um, after that, after we got all, all of that set up, I animated the boxes, did the, did the same thing with them as well. Um, actually, I, I didn't add noise to these uh, since it, it wasn't needed, but I just, uh, instead of making them completely white, if you go to the solid settings, uh, you can see it's just a uh, gray color, just so that the, the glow is not so intense. Okay, so back to the final comp, you can see uh, there's not much that I added here, so uh, we're gonna start from scratch and uh, I hope you will have a, an easier time following everything that I do. So let's go back to the project tab, hit composition, new composition, 
and uh, the the one I did uh, I set it to 1080p but just for the sake of this tutorial we're gonna set it back to ah uh, sorry 720p hit OK and um, I brought in some stuff here there's a reference pick and there's also the original intro which I downloaded just so that you have an easier time I'm gonna just right click on the reference pick go transform fit to comp uh, by using the original one, I managed to animate every letter according to how it originally looks instead of just messing around and not getting the results that uh, I wanted. So, go here. This is like the final part. So, we can just cut it and around here. So, we're going to Alt open bracket to cut there, move it to the end. And as you can see, it kind of cuts off in the end, but that's that's okay since we're not going to need any more of that. So we're just going to Alt, Close Bracket, bracket sorry. And uh, there you go. Now, we're going to start off by uh, typing our text in. So let's move in the end. And uh, let's go New, Text. And for the font, the, the font that they use in the show is called Benguiat. I don't know if you, if you pronounce it like, like that, but uh, I'll put a link in the description so you can download it. And we're going to start off by typing in Stranger Things. And we're doing this just so that we have a basic layout on everything. And uh, if you go ahead and bring the window align over here, you can select the text, click this button, it'll align it. Uh, horizontally in the middle and this one it align it uh, vertically in the middle so there's a quick tip for you and uh, we're gonna double click on that paragraph make it like uh, like that I don't know what that's called so bring it back in the middle and there you go as I said earlier we're not gonna we're not gonna leave all the letters in a one text layer and that's because we want to be able to animate all the individual individual letters individually. So to do that, we're going to have to just duplicate all this text and realign them manually. It's going to take some time, but we're going to do it. Now, before we do that, one more thing I want to cover is that uh, originally this was set to like a color. There you go. So there's like the the main fill color and then there's the border color which can increase here and you can see what that does so if you could change the second color that's basically the border color but in the original one if you turn this back on you can see there's just a stroke and not a fill so let's turn that back off and if you select the first color which again is the fill you just click on this button down here and it'll just uh, get rid of that. And now that we did that, we're just gonna set the stroke width to maybe two. I think it was one originally. Yeah, let's leave it at one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is um, duplicate all this stuff. And once I'm done, I'll just uh, cut the video, be back, and uh, everything should be ready. Okay, so I've gone ahead and duplicated all the layers and uh, um, tried to roughly match them to, to the original one. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, something like that is close enough. So let's turn that off and uh, you can see what that looks like. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you some tips on like uh, something that uh, will help you when doing stuff, stuff like this. So what I did first what was uh, say I created this layer and when you duplicate it instead of like just moving it with the mouse and trying to align it or even just holding down shift and the arrow keys uh, you can speed up the process go ahead and duplicate that again by just clicking on it and just holding down shift and it'll lock it to that horizontal line and that'll just uh, speed up the process a little bit so let's delete that and uh, as I mentioned earlier, earlier, sorry about this rang layer being all together. Uh, the reason I did that is because if we turn on the original intro and just solo that out, you can see all the letters kind of move. Even the I and G stick together, but they 
the spacing just changes except for, for the rank there so the spacing kind of decreases as time moves time goes by so that's the reason for that and as for the other letters I just uh, made them separate layers from each other now on to animating and uh, again I use the original intro as a reference so uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, see for example the S here if we select that unsolo this if we select that S and uh, scroll through time this is where it actually ends so we're gonna hit B so this is the final position for the S so we're gonna click click the stopwatch for the S and actually no this is this is where it stops moving around right here so I think we just need to scale down the original video just a little bit and there you go so this is where the S stops moving so we're gonna click a click the stopwatch there and I'll move back in time until it until it goes out of frame and just hold shift I'm just gonna bring it down till it goes out of frame there and instead of having it just go like stop immediately if you turn this off you can see it better hit B and N it trims the comp the work area and you can hit zero for RAM preview preview you can see it stops immediately so let's zoom in it just stops there's no like it's not like a smooth smooth stop instead it just snaps to that position and the way we can do that is by just selecting the last keyframe keyframe assistant and easy ease and also then afterwards we can just uh, right click keyframe velocity and basically depending on uh, how you want to smooth it out you can increase the uh, incoming velocity or the outgoing velocity uh, incoming velocity uh, affects the, the keyframes from the left outgoing affects them from the right so it's gonna increase the incoming velocity for to up to 60% hit OK and now that's a little bit smoother if we ramp preview it now you can see how that looks now I'm gonna go ahead and cover the rank uh, spacing animation as well as uh, uh, for the others I'm just gonna go ahead and pause the video just like before once I'm done come back and uh, everything should be ready so uh, let's go to the rank and uh, the way we animate the uh, spacing is uh, let's just turn off the turn on sorry the original one let me scroll through time so we're gonna go to the beginning and uh, actually no let's go to where to actually just so around there seems like it's the final position for the letters so around there so we're gonna click on the arrow click on text and we're gonna go ahead and click on this where it says animate and the option one we're looking for is a uh, tracking so let's go ahead and turn that off once again and see here the tracking amount if we increase that you can see what that does it spreads the letters out and uh, as we mentioned this is like the final position so we're gonna leave it at that hit the stopwatch here we're just gonna move back all the way in the beginning and just spread them out just like that and now as time moves by they come back together and we're gonna do the same for these letters as well I'm gonna hit right click keyframe assistant easy ease right click and for some reason oh there you go keyframe velocity Let's just bring that up to 70 as well and hit OK okay so I'm gonna go ahead and quickly do an animation for the other letters as well since it's gonna take some time if we just uh, do them one by one and record them as well so um, give it a try yourself uh, I'll I'll actually put a link to this project as well in the description so you can mess around with it and uh, see every single effect or every single keyframe that I did in detail but uh, for now I'm just gonna skip the, the part where I just do the boring parts and I'll be back after 10 years so uh, stay tuned okay so after 10 years of hard work I'm finally done with animating every single one of these letters 
and uh, it was it was kind of worth it. Yeah, it was worth it. So anyway, we're gonna move on now. We're gonna select all the letters. Uh, hit Control Shift C, or let's cancel that. Go up to Layer, Pre Compose, Move All Attributes, and we're gonna call this Text, or rather just Individual Letters. Hit OK. Now we have our comp, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, create a new solid. Name this noise, fractal noise. Color doesn't matter since we're gonna be adding the effect and uh, hit OK. Now I'm gonna go up here, effect, noise and gray, grain, fractal noise. And uh, you can see now uh, the, the fractal type is currently basic, so we're gonna change that to dynamic. Uh, you don't have to select dynamic, but uh, I, I personally preferred that because I messed around with the other ones as well. So uh, let's just select dynamic for now and then uh, increase the contrast, decrease the brightness a little bit. Complexity, you don't, you don't have to uh, put that higher or even lower. Uh, six is uh, good enough. And then at the transform, actually, we're just going to decrease that. So we have a little bit more detail. Okay, so when we, once we have that set up, we're going to bring it below the individual letters so that way we can set it as an alpha mat of the letters and uh, there's the effect. So um, I th I'm thinking the scale is a, a little bit too small right now so let's go back to the scale. Okay, th that's that's good enough. And um, for the tint, we're gonna go ahead click uh, right click effect color correction and tint and you just want to like set the color the black one to not completely white because that'll just uh, get rid of the whole detail so we're just gonna set it to like kind of like a darkish grayish color around there seems fine hit OK and let's play around with it mount to tint we're gonna have to pre-compose this as well so we're gonna select the fractal noise, control select the individual letters comp as well. So you can hit control shift C and let's just name as final letters. Hit OK. And uh, basically in this comp, we're gonna come back later and uh, uh, put the lines, the line at the top, the lines in the left and right. So let's go back to the final comp, first letters, and let's just rename this to final tutorial comp I like to keep things organized I usually name them uh, in better ways but let's move on let's right click effect and before we go ahead and add the glow effect we're gonna give it some color by going to color correction and tint that way the glow effect doesn't just uh, make the white color glow instead uh, another color we're, we're gonna give it so uh, let's see around here uh, kinda give it a, a brownish look so around here seems fine. We can tweak that later. Uh, let's right click now, Effect, Stylize, Glow. And we're gonna leave the glow colors from original colors. And let's just bring down the color threshold to a point where it doesn't start looking all yellow. So around there, increase the intensity. What we're gonna do is actually dupli duplicate this glow because See if we if we solo this reference pick real quick. Uh, actually, the video has better quality. Yeah. So there's there's kind of like two glows going on here. So there's the the first glow that goes around the letters, and there's also this big, huge, blurry glow that covers the whole the whole title. So that's what we're looking for. So we're gonna go back to the comp. And uh, we're gonna play around with this glow. And actually, let's just turn the video on, move it down here, just so we can see. We can just uh, try to match it. And uh, I'm thinking the color should be just a little bit more red. And at this point, it's just uh, trial and error. You just have to experiment around with it, get the look that you want. I I rarely get the the, the same look that I want when doing a tutorial, so it's kind of hard for me to do that. So what we're gonna do is actually let's just go back to the project and um, go under the comp. We're gonna copy the glow from both both of these. So we're gonna click both the glows, go back to the effect, 
delete that glow and just paste it there so there you go just uh and you can see what the difference was so we used color a and b no we did not it's actually set to original color so you can see how the settings were 30 percent threshold radius intensity all that stuff so i think adding the second glow because we if we turn that off it's actually really close to what we had before so i think the second glow really helps sell the effect and one more thing i'm thinking right now is this s is kind of too dark so let's go back here to the fractal noise let's just bring the amount of tint a little bit higher okay so moving on we got the glow effects and all that stuff so we're gonna go ahead and actually desaturate this a little bit just because uh kind of looks too vibrant so we're gonna right click go effect color correction hue and saturation and we're just gonna bring the saturation down just a little bit and for the final thing that i did is uh, i just added a noise effect now originally i added a grain just because it makes it look a lot better if we zoom in here and i'm not sure if you can see this but we gotta add uh, the intensity to like three so you can see what the grain does it just adds like all these blocks of noise kind of stuffs uh, i don't even know how to explain it but you can see here if i zoom in this is just the the viewing mode is set to preview so it only adds grain to this part but we set it to final output you can see how the whole uh, title looks but it just uh, it was just too slow for me to play around with it so i just went ahead and kept it simple with a noise effect uh i used color noise crack that up yeah something like that seems good and no let's just bring it down to seven eight now let me let me just show you real quick why i added noise so if you just right click bring this back to fit to comp when it when the letters are close to the camera you can see here if we zoom in there's some sort of noise and some sort of texture going on here so that's the reason uh, why why i added noise as well so Okay, so now before we move on to the camera and uh, making the letters zoom in and out, I want to point out something that I forgot to tell you, and that is, let's go to the individual letters, to the first comp here. And um, the the first letters here in the first comp, you want to set them to 3D. And you want to set them as 3D objects. The reason for that being is that once we create a camera here and uh, create a null object and animate it, those actually follow but there's a slight problem uh, because these are in a pre-comp so they're not gonna count as 3d here uh, right now but what you want to do is go to the final letters comp and click this uh, collapse button or whatever it is called that way this itself will be counted as a 3d object so whatever whatever features are enabled in this comp for these layers It'll it'll recognize them here and just uh, transfer them to uh, to the other comps as well. So let's go back to the original comp as well and click the collapse button as well in here. So uh, everything should be fine now. If we go ahead and right click new uh, camera, let's uh, just leave the options default. And if we go ahead and click C, which is gonna bring the camera tool, you can just control all of the options at once so uh, left click enables you to orbit uh, right click enables you to zoom in and out and uh, middle click if your mouse has one allows you to just pan around in order to make the the animations easier uh, what I did is just uh, create a null object and track and uh, parented the camera to that null object and you can you're gonna have to uh, enable the 3d layer for the null object as well for this to work so now when we move it in the z axis the camera follows as well so uh we're just gonna give it a quick animation here this is like the final look so click p set a keyframe there go back to the beginning just zoom it out kind of like in the original intro so something like that seems good and just like before we're gonna click keyframe assistant easy ease and uh, just increase the incoming velocity 
Okay, so we're pretty much done with all the core stuff, so we're gonna go ahead and just add a new solid just for like a that circle fade in the end. And uh, we can come up here, click on that, hold your left mouse button and just select the circle mask. And we're gonna double click and you can see what that does, it just creates a circle around your comp. And uh, if we turn it on, it's set to add now, so that's why you can't see anything. Uh, but if we subtract it, and uh, let's just increase the feather as well. We can play around, just double click, double click the M button, we can play around the expansion. So if we expand that or turn that down, you can see what that does. So we're gonna expand it to like 300, just thought it doesn't cover any of the text. If we come back in the beginning, we're gonna come here, come here just click on that stopwatch, move a few seconds, and just bring it down a lot till it covers the whole, the whole title. Okay, so something I realized just now is that there's something missing and that is the boxes at the top, the left and the right side and uh, I apologize for that. So let's just go back to the final letters, comp, right click, new solid and the reason we want to create them here is that because the glow will be, will affect those boxes as well. So we're going to right click, new solid, call this box hit OK and uh, we're gonna go ahead and select the rectangle tool up here create a new box real quick there you go try to position it correctly and I believe the uh, align tool works with the masks as well there you go yeah it does so let's just adjust the mask a little bit hit enter and we're gonna just uh, try to eyeball this so we're gonna animate this real quick before duplicating it uh, the reason we do that is that we don't have to animate both the masks masks twice, so that saves us some time. So, we're gonna click on the mask path, and this is basically gonna be the end, the ending keyframe. So the start keyframe is gonna be like we're gonna hold Control so it uh, scales down the the right part as well. So we're gonna just scale it down. So we're gonna leave it at that. Hit Enter. Let's duplicate the mask now. Set it to subtract. And if we turn it back on, double click M, just bring the mask expansion down to minus one. You can see what that does. So there you go. Now we're gonna just um, click on these two keyframes and just click easy ease. Maybe drag them over a little bit. And there you go. We can just uh, give that a quick RAM preview. And eh, that's too slow. So let's. Just... And uh, now you just have to Alt open bracket. It cuts there. So basically from nothing, it just shows up and just uh, does a quick animation. I'm thinking even faster would be good. There you go. So basically the same principle applies for the boxes uh, down below as well. So I think I'm gonna just skip on those. Uh, you can download the project, uh, mess around the project, even add your own letters, but you're gonna have to do some animating in order to do that. So um, this was basically this was basically all that, uh, that was required to achieve this and it was actually pretty fun you know, just uh, experimenting with uh, all the different effects, all the uh, letter animations and all that stuff to achieve the same look as in the original one. So it was kind of challenging, so I like challenge challenges and all that stuff. So yeah, uh, that was pretty much it. Uh, I thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, as always, just uh, make sure to leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to respond and uh, I'll see you next time.